Daniel Romano is a multi-talented musician, producer, songwriter, and label co-owner who currently calls Fenwick, Ontario home. Over the past 15 years, he's made a name for himself in bands like Attack and Black and Daniel, Fred, and Julie, and also as a solo artist exploring the far reaches of folk, country, rock, and punk music. His sixth solo album is called Modern Pressure, which was just longlisted for the 2017 Polaris Music Prize in Canada, and is otherwise being lauded as Romano's finest and most mystifying album yet. It's out courtesy of You've Changed Records in Canada and New West Records elsewhere around the world, and it prompted Dan to return to this show to discuss turning off the refrigerator in his compound apartment, music appreciation and consumption, Jennifer Castle, diss tracks and his new song about the Ramones, and U2, the new tape by his band Ancient Shapes, Bob Dylan's recent speech accepting his Nobel Prize for Literature, the future of his old band, Attack in Black, Modern Pressure, and much more. Sponsored by Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee, this is Daniel Romano on the 324th episode of Creative Control with your host, me, Vish Khanna. Jennifer, the mother of us all. Hi, Dan. How's it going? It's going well. How are you, Vish? I'm well. I'm well. I'm, I'm very well, actually. How are things? Are you... The last time you were on the show, you told me that you were at a compound in Fenwick, Ontario. Is that where you are today? Yes. Still and, at the compound. <laughs> and how are things at the compound? Chaotic today. A little bit. But uh, good. It's a big um, going away prep type situation right now right you're heading out on tour soon right yeah everybody's doing everything is uh is daily life on a compound (laughs) always kind of chaotic though there's something about compound makes me think there's going to be chaos in your everyday life i don't know why it's not always chaotic but it's like um there is a lot of time uh with uh other people it's very communal obviously um sure so sure that in itself can seem hectic when really it's it's not um, that kind of thing. Do you thrive in that uh, atmosphere, that environment where things are kind of... I think I do now. I, 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 I always, um, when I first moved here, uh, for a couple of weeks anyway, it was uh, the opposite. felt like uh, very lonely but like in a in a productive way but uh yeah i think i think uh i need like uh validation a lot so <laughs> when there's people around it's uh from as many people as possible <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't strike me as a guy who does need that i mm. never i never think of you that way i think of you as uh being your own man well it's kind of like only by who whoever's around it's not like a, a specific set you know i like to share i think is really what i'm saying that's true. Uh, you seem like a, a man who's generous of spirit. That is my impression of you. That's good. I just wonder. I, I'm. I'm all. I'm. I'm. You know. Every uh, few weeks, I will think of you at the compound. Yeah. And I just. I just imagine what you're doing. I just imagine what it's like to live on a compound because I right. have roommates now. Yeah. Uh, my children, and right. they're not great roommates. Of, but of it, course. And my house is small, so it kind of feels like. I feel like I can almost relate to what you're saying about this notion of being surrounded by people, but also feeling a little alienated. Yeah. Do you have like a Vish room? But not the the Vish room is also the laundry room, <laughs> and uh, my room's kind of the kitchen. Well, actually, this is an interesting thing because okay, so my my uh, front of house guy slash friend Kenny Meehan, he lives upstairs, uh, and Usually, when there's ec- like sort of uh, extra people around, my 
space is the hangout space but mm. when sp- i guess specifically americans come here it's like everyone flocks to the second floor so it's i don't know what that's all about but Ken- kenny's um apartment has become the uh the go-to hangout sp- space oh yeah i got rid of my I, I, there's nowhere to i turned my fridge i unplugged my fridge because i don't use it and i don't have any cat ca- i got rid of my couches so the only place to s- places to sit in my house now are two um benches that i got from the bowling alley that aren't very comfortable i see so it's not the most welcoming place your i space. guess yeah i wonder if i did that on purpose without realizing it sounds like you may have. It's a cry I, I, for. It's a it, cry was for. it a common? <laughs> <laughs> was it was it a common fridge that you turned off? No, no, just mine. You had your own fridge. Yeah, oh yeah. I like my my apartment's large, um, and has, like, I mean, this my workspace is also the kitchen. Oh, uh, I see. I see. I see. I see. Okay. For now, and um, I don't really use the fridge. I so. don't. You need a fridge to live with the food and the person no i don't really like i don't really do uh, the food thing (laughs) what do you you don't eat no i eat i just don't make it you don't make it where do you get food restaurants you just go to restaurants and eat the food there okay i like uh, this might be a thing that uh exemplifies your age maybe because i used to be not a cooker on some level and then now i just like i really enjoy dan you know what's going to happen because i know you a little bit yeah. You're going to get into cooking. Do you think so? You're going to get into cooking and gonna, you're going to be so into it because a lot of what you do with your work and your music is you're adding elements and you're trying different things and you're yeah. sending it out into the world, right? And people now judge everything you say and do and they're like, oh, it's not what's happening. It's not like the last time. That's kind of what cooking is. Cooking is a lot of like, I don't you know, you might have an idea of what you're going to do. But the same meal can be different every time. If you, if you you can improve it, you can you can you can refine it. You can do you can go nuts one day and just try a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Cooking is really I I bet if you got into cooking, I, a I think you'd like it, and B I bet you'd be good at it. I just don't find I find eating to be a, a, quite an inconvenience at this point hmm. in my life. I I don't think I hope that it's not always the case, but <clears throat> right now. It's kind of this thing that's in the way of whatever I'm doing. See, I don't feel that way about eating. I feel that way about sleeping. I find sleeping to be a huge Sleeping's injury. annoying too, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about that last night as I was going to bed, and I, I, I had done uh, working with this girl, Caitlin Rose, right now, uh, and I, I did like her whole, the instrumentation to her entire record yesterday, and I was feeling kind of crazy about that because that's a lot of things to do in one day yeah and uh minus the drums the drums i did the day before and uh i just yeah i had a coca-cola kind of late at night yeah that's not good but it doesn't usually coca-cola doesn't affect me i can just drink it whenever no i can't i i I, again it's your age it's your age i used to drink a coke like every day yeah me too now if i go past like 4 p.m i'm up i'm up all night (laughs) so my tolerance for caffeine is lowered as well yeah i had to force myself to go to sleep last night basically Uh, yeah well i I, all i say is to get back to it sleep sucks food is Mm -hmm. good cooking is fun i think you i I honestly you know what i i have come around to think food is good Mm -hmm. i used to just you know wish that i had no taste buds and didn't care (laughs) and just could drink like a brown smoothie of sorts and whatever (laughs) Uh-huh. That would be all the things I needed for the day. Sure, but um, I do think food is good. Okay, now, but so cook- that's a step. That's a step in the direction of maybe like wanting to make it. Yeah, yeah. I think I. I honestly, I. I don't want to. You know, I just think that you would have fun with it because it's it's a lot of fun. It is a lot yeah. of fun. It's a lot of I work. It's like, a big mess. I think that's like a state of sort of like relaxation that I haven't gotten to yet well you know where you can be like i'm gonna make especially I li- like i live l- alone so like i'm gonna make a meal for myself i'm mm-hmm. gonna take like an hour or how i don't know how long cooking takes but i'm gonna take this this period of time in my day 
and make food for me, you know, well, as opposed to going out, supporting your local economy. You could do both. <laughs> I just came home the other day. I came home and my kids, I got my kids. And then I realized my wife and I hadn't planned dinner. And so I just stared at the fridge. Like you don't have a fridge now, but I stared at the fridge and then I went down to the storage freezer and then I just whipped up. I'm not, this is not a boast. I just Googled, oh. I just looked for food recipes yeah. based on the elements that I had in front of me. Yeah. And I made this, uh, I'm not a great cook, but I just made this beautiful, creamy, what was it? A butter, garlic, shrimp pasta? Okay. And I'm not a guy who could do that normally, yeah. but I just did it with like, yeah. uh, oh man, with arugula and now I'm getting hungry. It was great. I, I do loved love it. Arugula. Anyway, my point here is that's me. Like you're a guy, you just talked about this. You're a guy who plays every instrument on song sometimes. Like that to me is a recipe. That to me is like, right. what the hell am I going to do? And then you're just adding, because that to me is just bizarre. I've never done well, that. I've never <clears throat> played every instrument on a song, so I'm a if, little baffled by If that's by the it. analogy, I feel like I always just make like a salad, the same <laughs> salad <laughs> over and over again. No, I don't think so. You mentioned the drumming uh, on the Caitlin Rose record that you did, mm -hmm. and I was listening to Modern Pressure, which I'm hoping we will talk about at some point, <laughs> just for your own, just out of respect for you. Yeah. And the time that you've given me today. Uh, the drumming is really interesting. I, I was listening to your parts and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm essentially, a, if I'm a musician, I'm a drummer. And yeah. uh, very fascinating. Like a lot of Tom stuff and a lot yeah. of, uh, t can you talk about that a little bit? Like your approach to the, the, the rhythm on, on this, the rhythmic tracks on this record? I know it sounds like a, it could be a boring question, but. No, it's not boring to me. It might be boring to anyone who listens to this, but. I think if they um, hear the record, this would be nice insight because I find the drumming really fascinating. I don't necessarily know what I was trying to channel. I just kind of was, uh, I was um, purposely playing, uh, I guess, to the to the vocal in my head more so than just rhythmically. You know, like the Keith Moon approach of 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 following the vocal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, which was difficult because I did drums first to like. I don't think I did. I don't even think I laid down scratch tracks. I think I just played it with like a lyric sheet taped to the kick drum or something. You know. Really? Is that that's unusual for you? No. I do that sometimes, but but uh if I'm like nothing nothing is like um you know, I hate the grid. So I nothing's gridded. So really it made no sense to to do a scratch track. I was I was familiar enough with the with sort of how I wanted the songs to be, uh, that um, I could just kind of like hum along to it in my head while while doing the drum tracks. So some of it is uh, following the vocal, or what I thought was going to be the vocal that may have changed by the time the vocal actually got in there. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that was the the sort of idea. I mean, whatever the record A and B sides start with a ridiculously long drum fill. Yeah, like an odd drum fill. Yeah, the the beginning. Yeah, they just start. It starts weird, and you went <laughs> you went Tom crazy. Like just like yeah. lots of Tom. And then it goes straight four on the floor after that. I don't, yeah, I don't know. That, that just was funny to me. It, it, it's amusing. <laughs> like on some level, I, as a, a, a like, it's it, it, it doesn't. It's not just well. I shouldn't say it's not distracting. It stuck out for me. Like I was yeah. just like very enamored of your playing, and I don't want to. <laughs> again, some people are going to be really bored by this point with us just talking about the drumming but i do when people check out if they haven't listened to modern pressure yet i, I was would, i i was very focused on drums for this record you I wanted were the drums to sound cool and i wanted uh the playing to be interesting you invoked uh, keith moon's name there was there anyone else because i i have some you know i would say just the two greats keith and ringo is that right yeah 
What about run? What about the drumming on a, a record or a like mid seventies kind of Dylan, like uh, Desire maybe or the Rolling Thunder tour? Like there's yeah, some... who is on? Yeah, I mean that guy's insane. Yeah, I can't I, remember I the that guy's, guy's name. I can't remember it off the top of my but head. But it's right kind now. of like a Mitch Mitchell type thing. It is, right? but it's just very yeah. frenetic and it's very yeah. Tom oriented, and you have yeah. whole sections of your songs where you're just doing these. You mentioned Ringo. And I thought, in some cases, I thought of like sped up versions of like the come together beat, which is really yeah, odd. Yeah. Like, I also lift the uh, um, Tomorrow Never Knows or whatever that song's called. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lift of that in um, Sucking the Old World Dry. I think the chorus is essentially that beat or some variation of that. Yeah. Kind of it's thing. a very distinctive beat. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Anyway. The, the, the beat ahead of its time, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> it was. I think yeah. it was. You, oh, yeah. I think Ringo's an, a, a very tasty drummer. Yeah. And the, and the other things, like I don't want to just bog you down with references because I do want to, first of all, uh, kind of contextualize the record just by the name uh, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because this notion of modern pressure has been swimming around in my head a lot because I think it has a temporal distinction as well. It suggests there was an old kind of pressure, <laughs> you know, a different right. kind of pressure, and now yeah. there's a modern kind of pressure can you expand upon what you were going for there oh i don't i i've been meaning to sort of like figure out what i meant by that this follows uh, a record of yours called mosey yeah which i think we discussed the last time you were on you know mosey has a kind of i don't know it's it's it sounds like a relaxed thing you would do as a person who moseys, you which know? is yeah, it's funny that anything like that would be tagged to me because <laughs> I'm very much not like that. No, um, and then modern pressure. <laughs> when I heard, when I saw that that was the name of this record, it did make me think of our conversation and 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 things you've said in the press just about. Uh, I don't know, just thinking about the world critically and yeah, and and certainly the way culture is valued and. And I just well, think I, of it like, as, the, I think like the thing is, I like I'm 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 a victim to a very specific type of uh, uh, oversaturation or or um, a decrease in value to a very specific thing that is my, I guess, way of life, and I, I imagine it stems from something uh, as like sort of like selfish and and um, boring as that, but. Uh, you know, you once you think about that, what's affecting you, and um, realize that that thing is kind of universal, uh, as far as like a sort of um, a, a mass decrease in quality of of all things, or th- that kind of idea. You know, I think I, I think that's kind of the root of the whatever that theme might be. Are you saying you? I'm I'm trying to unpack what you said. You you're feeling like in your prolific artistic output you might be undervaluing yourself and then within no, that you no feel- I, I i'm saying more like uh when art, like art becoming free that kind of oh, thing i see which is a very confusing thing it's a confusing time for for that to be because you know you have to sort of juggle what the meaning is now what what is so, the, what is the purpose of of it you know, not that the purpose is 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 uh, monetary, but that is what sustains it. You know, you know, people so don't it, have yeah, uh, yeah. Pa- people don't have patrons anymore. Uh, I, f- I know a few that do, but uh, mostly, mostly we don't have patrons um, beyond the general public who do not want or don't see the point in 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 purchasing anything. Uh, that is made which may actually be the root of why I make things so quickly and in mass quantity uh, is maybe just to no I don't know I don't know it's <laughs> it's a funny it's a funny thing so but you but are th- you you are suggesting that you are speaking to contemporary experience and how it's distinct from the way things used to be yeah, I I just don't think that people enjoy music anymore. So when you say you think I think people like the idea of liking music. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that people as a whole need it. 
Do you think that it's been supplanted by other things, or do you just feel like that's just because of the way it's been? It, it we are we are conditioned to spend two or three thousand dollars on a computer, and uh, you know a thousand dollars on a phone, without without you know thinking about it, and and two hundred dollars for the data. Yeah, I, I mean, I should retract some of what I said. I think people do need music. I just think people don't know how to enjoy it. But how does that manifest or, I don't think people are getting the full experience of, like, of what it is anymore. And, and, and maybe don't even have the inherent desire to, you know? But but how does that manifest itself exactly? Like when you say that people, that's a that's a huge statement to make. Well, just, I think okay, actually, Kay is is a good example. Uh, she she kind of had an, a not as culturally diverse upbringing, you could say, or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Um, and uh, so she has not been exposed to a lot of the things that say you and I as like music nerds have. Yeah. And so she, I can I can like kind of have these experiences again through her you know because because uh she'll hear something that uh we've heard a million times or whatever and and have kind of done this same thing to you know kind of just like yes yes that's that's fine we don't need to hear that song you know and she'll she'll be like so heavily moved by it you know for the first time like like hearing it i think that she she's one of the people i i know that that really experiences music you know, to the point, and this is like, and that's another reason I, I make records so quickly is so that I don't remember them so that I can enjoy them from like a fan's perspective, hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and that, uh, that's just fun for me. Like when I, when I do the ancient shape stuff, it's, it's like two days, whole record. I don't know what it is. You take a step back for maybe a day and then you listen to it and it's like this, record that just exists that I can't necessarily, I don't necessarily relate to it in an immediate kind of way. Yeah. And so I can, I can like it without, you know, I don't criticize, I don't critique anything I do anymore. That's kind of where I'm trying to get to where I'm just like, that's, that exists that came from me, but I don't necessarily relate to it on like a, on a personal level. Hmm. I relate to it as a as a, a lover of music can you can yeah. you actually just back up and explain who Kay is for people who oh, don't yeah. know who Kay is uh the woman who does everything in my life and uh <laughs> she is now the organist and uh uh singer in the band she's right. played virtually every instrument in the band but now she's on organ which is her dominant instrument well piano is her dominant instrument and okay. so she's uh She's one of those people that can pick up anything and be extremely good at it within, you know, 45 minutes. Right. Okay. So it, this, is, hmm, this is fascinating to me. And I'm trying to figure out how all of this stuff informs your kind of aesthetic um, these days in particular. Because I think we made some allusions to things that I've heard popping up on the record in terms of influence. You've mentioned a few people as well. Um, I was really only listening to the Incredible String Band at the time. I tried to only listen to that. Why is that? Which it didn't really, you know, that didn't really translate so much. Um, just because I think that they're the f- like, other than Jennifer Castle, they're kind of like the freest performers that have existed, hmm. in my opinion. Right. You know. Right. So it was important for you to feel inspired. I, I, free is the wrong word. Freedom, whatever. Um, I just think, uh, let's say musically, uh, unhinged. Okay. And, and that's something that, that frenetic quality informs this record for sure. It has much more to do with, um, it's not a, it's, it's so much less physical. It's, it's more of like this ethereal kind of like magical thing as opposed to this, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard to explain. You know the string band? Yeah, I know them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I like about them. They don't think about like, oh, is the what's the harmony for this part? Or um, what are the chords? You know, it's like, eh, it doesn't matter. Whatever they are, it's fine. You know? Right. 
and there's a certain I, yeah that, I think I could, that, that that element of music is is long f- missing it's 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 uh you know it doesn't um really exist in music that much anymore other than jennifer jennifer does it jennifer jennifer is able to tap into that sense of music can be anything yeah and i mean you i know you know her yeah she's she's a very special and spiritual presence um and that you know she's one of those people where her music directly embodies her personality you know Mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm-hmm and her, yeah, and her outlook, really. And her outlook, yes. Yeah. You've got two, at least two songs that are, I believe, explicitly about women on the record, Roya and Jennifer Castle. You've called the song Jennifer Castle uh, after uh, the musician Jennifer Castle. Yeah. Uh, these are tributes to these people. Uh, yes. And like I say, I, I imagine there are other uh, tributes to people somewhere uh, throughout the record. But why, why did you want to do this? I mean, this notion of... Writing someone these a aren't, song. I mean, these if, they're not love songs, you know. Like these aren't like um, your your typical like relationship kind of love songs. These are odes, I guess you could call them. You well, know? you have a complicated relationship with love songs. You invoke the notion of love songs, well, and what I have they a mean. Complic- yeah, that's true. On I the do. record, I mean, yeah, yeah. And a quarter to four And the rust in the hinges Still seizes the door And what's to be done On the white wing it does Tell me what's to become Of the meaning of love So um, I, it's interesting that your your point of you you immediately wanted wanted to clarify <laughs> that you hadn't written these two people love songs per se. Yeah, in the traditional sense. Yeah. Right. Right. But they are they are odes. They are. They are. Uh, yeah. They're they're almost like a they're not an homage necessarily, but they are like. Uh, yeah, more of a like celebration or, or something like that. Yeah, what and you you talked about Jennifer a bit. Who is Roya? Roya is um the uh woman in uh in Sweden who who uh housed me and uh Kenny when we were there for over a month just living in her cabin. Um and she And you ma- you just, made this record in the cabin, right? In Sweden. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she is um, just one, like just the one of the most genuinely caring individuals. You know, like one of those people that uh, um, will just do anything for anyone else, just because she's wonderful. Um, and having you know having that like secluded experience of that. Uh, uh, was just uh, at times overwhelming. We, you know, we showed up and and we were like, hey, yeah, you know, she. We didn't know where we were going to go, basically. Yeah. Because uh, we had a bunch of time between tours uh, to to do whatever, and uh, she was like, "You can stay as long as you want." You know, the offer still stands. If I was there right now, I'm su- I'm sure she wouldn't even be irritated about it, which is insane to me. Um. Uh. And, uh, you know, so she, she opened up her, her home to us for an in, indefinite period of time. And, uh, and so we got there and we were like, we want to make a record in here, uh, since we'll be here or whatever. And, and within definitely inside of an hour, she had sourced everything that we had written down that we needed. Wow. wow. Yeah. From th- just friends in town and we did the rounds in our little... Peugeot and picked everything up and it was crazy. <laughs> she she would, she would just show up with dinner, you know, like almost every night. This one, like, you know. 
So on some level, the least you can do for someone when they're that generous to you is write them a song. I imagine it must be overwhelming for someone to to realize that uh, they are the recipient of a, a song, a nominal recipient of their song. Like you named songs after people. What was the, Have you talked to them about their reactions to these songs? No, uh, it makes me nervous to do that. I mean, okay. I, I've talked to Jennifer about it because she talked to me about it. Uh, is that the ultimate gift, do you think, for an artist to, to do something like this? It's really the only one that I know how to make. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That okay. isn't like physical goods. Uh, you know, like. I, sure. I, I, Last longer than a bottle of wine, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, well, th- these two songs. Like Jennifer, Jennifer said, like, thank you for immortalizing me in song. <laughs> which you know i mean she she's the immortal one to me i i don't uh, she's immortalized song. herself she's made yeah. records yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah no i think it's a loving i i know you what so I, I i know you 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 hedged a little when i about the love song thing but you also have a, a song called what's to become of the meaning of love something about love uh and passion i mean you mentioned that people don't appreciate music the way maybe they should i have no beef with those people either that's just we're we're you know we're we're subject to a time i I don't you know i don't No, no but there's a there's a caring i i appreciate that but i think there's a something really telling about your homing in on that notion of conviction and love and and, well i think i have to touch on it because it's the it's my job you Mm -hmm. know so that I mean, it's gonna creep into what I'm, you know, when I'm making something that stems from just pure thought. Like that thought is going to be in there because uh, it's not only what I'm thinking, but it's also directly it has um, <clears throat> directly to do with what I'm making. Yeah, that's fair. But I wonder if. I don't think you're behaving indifferently to what's going on in the culture. I think you're reacting to it. When you talk about w- trying to contemplate why why you make stuff as much as you do and as fast as you do, it, that's how we consume now. Like that's even though you're not yeah. trying to give the, those people but doing so credence, is, <clears throat> but that's I, what I I agree with that. I think the issue is the the industry in which this thing exists is not uh, has not adapted to that. That's, that's my, my, that would be my personal biggest frustration is that, um, I'm like, I don't think that, um, more output necessarily means saturation. I think more output, um, feeds a desire, you know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, the 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 systematic record cycle uh, is uh, dated. Right. You say it feeds desire, but I think it also fulfills an expectation that there will be content. Yeah. Uh, well, like and some, consum- pe- some, <clears throat> some people can do it still. You know what I mean? Like uh, there are certain platforms and certain artists that uh, have basically you can develop you, you can you can project what's to be expected of you. But if you're in a uh, systematic stronghold that doesn't allow your output to be as um, ample as you want it to be, uh, then you you end up with your shelves full, you mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. you, and uh, and that can be frustrating because I only relate to what is being made for a certain period of time. And then I just don't want it to exist anymore. So, uh, of your own, of your own. Yeah. 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 Of course. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of things just don't see the light of day because of that. And I find that to be frustrating because I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not projecting the current version of what I want to be projecting at all times you know what i mean it does feel like you, you're someone who's fighting time and the times a little bit i i don't want to be that person but i you know i'm modernized you know no no i don't think you're i don't think you're I'm cut, not like cut a, off from I'm the not, times i'm not a nostalgic person i don't think i mean i listen to specific right. ty- types of music and i'm influenced by specific types of music but um i don't 
I don't think of that as nostalgia. I think everybody is now. I mean, what's, I mean, if you consider, you know, I think we've touched on this before, but, uh, you know, nothing, there has been no definitive new movement since like the mid eighties or early eighties. So everyone's aping something like that. You know, everyone's, everyone's channeling some kind of thing that has its birthrights in like the, whatever mid 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 last century yeah yeah different different times you're plugging into we talked about this it's sort of an amorphous everything's kind of like a glob uh a, a temporal glob yeah and i and either you're you know interested enough to know its source or you're not and that's the only difference it's all coming from from this one period of time yeah that's fair Speaking of uh, which, you, yeah. you you speaking of which, you you pay some tribute to the Ramones, yes. uh, in a new video that uh, was just released, and and also uh, for the for the song "The Pride of Queens." You mm-hmm. we've talked about your tri- your your odes to Roya and Jennifer Castle. There's a lot yeah. of there. I think are more pointed elements to this record as well. There seem to be specific and non-specific diss tracks, if you will. <laughs> and the Pride of Queens is the one that stuck out to me the second I heard it. Because on the one hand, you are paying loving tribute to the Ramones. And this, but correct me if I'm wrong here, by the way. On the other hand, it seems to me that you are directly confronting the band U2 and their attempt <laughs> to pay tribute to the Ramones with their song, The Miracle of Joey Ramone. Yeah. Hey, that's a nice poem, don't let it get away. Please explain this to me because I find it very interesting. Well, I was slightly offended by that whole situation that happened and that we were all a victim to. Um, <clears throat> by, by, the, by, the, by the Irish quartet U2, when they inserted their record, Songs of Innocence, onto yeah. all of our, anyone who had an Apple product at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And now, it's, and see, again, because of how record cycles work, that's a very dated thing to be upset about. Yeah, but, this was a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wrote it w- directly when it happened. But uh, yeah, I, I just like, you know, there's those people that just ruin documentaries. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right, a documentary is going just fine, and then yeah, like, oh, like I wish Steve Earl. Cut. Steve Earl is one. Sure, yeah. David Fricky from Rolling Stone, <laughs> and Bono. They right. all seem to be in every single documentary about anything that's culturally relevant. And why are they there? Yeah, I mean, David Fricky. I understand why he's there. He's just in a lot of them, so I had to name. I say I say his name. He does sure. not upset me at all. You know. He's quite a presence. Right. But uh, I, d- I, I don't know. I have my doubts. Do you know what I mean? And that's what the song's about. I I have my doubts. You have your doubts about It is whether... not based in any sort of reality necessarily. I didn't fact check anything. I just said how I felt, you know? I, I, I'm with you on it. I, I found the... If if you just forget the fact that they... Like, here's the thing. Ronnie Drew, he's dying of cancer. Yeah. 
And then all of a sudden, Bono's there. He's not in any of the other... You know what I mean? He's at. He's there when Ronnie's on his deathbed. Basically, it just feels like... And it doesn't ha- matter if it's true, because it's a song. Who cares? But um, it's it just feels like opportunistic act, uh, actions mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. This is a band that... Uh but at the same time, I don't know. He's very charitable, right? Well, this is, so sorry, it's, there's it's, that. It's a questionable thing to, you know, this is not a dig on his. Uh, there's that whatever, aspect of millions it. Millions of dollars he gives to, sure. to AIDS awareness or whatever he does. I know he does lots of things. He's sure. Probably, no, I understand he's this. Tech, I, he's technically a great guy. Yeah. I right? understand. I understand the suspicion because, but at the same time, and I'm not defending anything. At the same time, some people who have gone to see U2 have seen P.J. Harvey. They've seen yeah. uh, Kanye West. They've seen yeah. Primus, you know, or whoever. And uh, there seem to be, I mean, on their current tour, you can see the Munford and Sons or whoever else. I can't remember. So but there was a point where, or the Pixies. I remember the last Pixies tour, I think, was mm. opening up for U2. Maybe that destroyed them. I have no idea. <laughs> but there's a there's a point where they seem, yes, potentially opportunistic. There's a point where they seem plugged in as well. Yeah. Like they, they know they have a mainstream big audience and they're trying to challenge them with an interesting opening act or whatever. Maybe. I don't know I what their motivations are. Maybe it just makes them look cool. It seems like hyperactive capitalist behavior Mm -hmm. to me Mm -hmm. Uh, not like how the Rolling Stones might do the same thing the Rolling Stones do the same thing with with tact I think Hmm. the Rolling Stones are I come across they're they're the way they project their sort of like hyping contemporary contemporaries is more of a it seems like it feels like a genuine love you know of like whatever i just like i believe them that's the difference mm. i couldn't tell you why mm-hmm. but when the rolling stones attach themselves to a modern thing in order to sustain themselves really is what's happening i believe that whom they chose or I, I just think that they thought about it and, and not in a way like not, not only because of like, this is cool. This will make people still think we're cool. Right. I think it's, there's more to it than that. And I think with, uh, you too, it's, it's not the case. I feel like they've given up trying to be cool. Finally. I hope they have because they've never been cool and they're a terrible <laughs> band. No one should like them. <laughs> but you do love the Ramones. I do love the Ramones. You mentioned Ancient Shapes earlier when I first heard the, the first Ancient Shapes record. By the way, this uh, silent rave tape that you made is great. Oh, you have one? I have a copy of the tape now, yeah. Nice, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's great. A giant Comma, is that the song? Yeah. Giant Comma. That's just a, <laughs> yeah. That is just a funny yeah. turn of phrase and image. With Ancient Shapes, I basically just write funny things down and then make songs out of them. But uh, It's quite a chorus. Yeah, I forget what that song's about, but it made sense when I wrote it. <laughs> there's, a, there's a Ramones... If, you, if there's Ramones in your work, it seems to come through in Ancient yeah, Shapes. Yeah, Ancient Shapes is basically just the Ramones and the Buzzcocks. Right, right. That's just a, an element that you... Or rather... A, something you value that you want to put forth and and, and yeah, I mean, it's the kind of spirit you can't put into everything all the time you know uh, and uh usually when i when i do do the drum tracks to an ancient shapes record which is like how the record is made um it comes from just like after a session of, with somebody else you know uh and the drums are still set up or whatever it's just like a quick you know maybe it wasn't the funnest thing to do or whatever, and then these drums are set up, bash out 30 minutes of whatever drumming, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then just make songs over top of it really quickly. 
Okay, so it, it has a kind of like, it's an immediate, it, the, the, the songs and the records have an immediate quality in Ancient Shapes. I guess that's where that comes from. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, that uh, that all, the origin of even doing that is comes from everything we've already talked about. Yeah. Just wanting to, I, I, I think having another outlet is one way of uh, dealing with the situation I'm whining about. Right, right. Well, this song, "The Pride of Queens," and there's a few other pointed uh, references on the on your on your Daniel Romano record, "Modern Pressure," and I couldn't help but think of similar kinds of diss tracks. Do you mind me invoking the phrase "diss track"? Love it. I was thinking of John Lennon's "How Do You Sleep" a lot. Yeah. And I was thinking of George Harrison's kind of pointed songs. That one's crazy. Which if one? I could, if "How Do You Sleep," if yeah. I could ever write a song as violent. <laughs> As that, that would be amazing. I'm sure I could. I'm too scared to, though. Is that is that 70s period of, of Lennon and Harrison? Because you mentioned Ringo. Let's just talk about the Beatles. Uh, <laughs> no, is that okay. period significant for you? Yeah, big time. Because I, I, I hear shades of it. I was trying to figure it all out, and uh, and where because I like to. F- I like to f- I like to figure out where, where I th- like I when you mentioned the string band I did not. Count well, that's on that. the thing, right? I kind of left Lennon out of that, but he 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 definitely had that quality too, mm-hmm. of of just um, anything goes, say what you feel. The yeah, yeah, like yeah. That's yeah. The, and, those and, are the only parameters. And go after people, like call yeah. people out. Yeah, I mean, he's called so many people out, or he used to call so many people out, and. Yeah just because he had the power to do it and it it seems like you're you're calling well, out a culture you're calling out a culture but you're also calling out a people yeah it's interesting yeah yeah it's that's an- i guess what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> i i it, it, you're just I mean, the, the the songs that you write as as daniel romano I, i'm just I, trying to putting, get, i'm just trying to see what i can get away with i'm gauging i'm gauging what i can get away with yeah yeah no i i gather that i gather that quite and it's you're getting away with quite a lot, if I might yeah, say. I mean, I the, so. the the songs are are fantastic. There's sitar on this yes. record. You're doing this interstitial thing that you did on the last two records. I can't remember where you it, you'll it always a song ends up happening. Yeah. yeah, you'll have a song and it seems to be done, and then there's just a thing, a tag. Yeah, where you're still doing this. Yeah, my yeah. only regret is that people seem to think that uh, the fake love songs track is a, is a an extended thought on J- the Jennifer Castle song which it yeah. is not yeah yeah it's, um, it's it's a separate entity it's a complete it's 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 similar in theme but also I didn't write that that was from a hardcore band from Welland called Keep It Up those lyrics mm-hmm. yeah I saw that in the liners yeah but it was fitting, yeah. uh, you know, and I liked, okay, so my old band made a made a cassette called Fake Love Songs. I think even then was either, was in tribute to the Keep It Up song, Fake Love Songs. Um, we didn't really touch on the, th- the theme, we just stole the title. Um, but there is a track on that that the melody is from for this song, mm-hmm. which was called Constellations. Um, and which I liked, and that tape didn't uh, didn't well. We only made very few of them, so they didn't really circulate very much, and not many people are familiar with it. Uh, so I wanted to sort of bring that back because it was I liked the melody. I'm not in I know everyone's got problems. Heartache is a part of life. But when is it going to stop? Yes, and you're all pushing the same trash And I just don't believe it Cause there's a lack of sincerity In the words you try to write Yes, you're cheapening the sentiments That you're trying to make into them just another it's interesting like you're, you're you in the conversation you were kind of not as uh, bear with me here i don't want to mm-hmm. put words in your mouth so correct me if i'm wrong like you're kind of calling out 
the way music is uh, accepted and received and consumed, but in the record, you're also calling out the people who make the music as being maybe not up to not up to snuff all the time. To a degree, I I I I thought this was kind of a love in as a, 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 of a record. You know, I was trying to hmm. to only project positivity, even if it was through pessimism. Yeah, so you know, sucking the old world dry. Uh, the, the songs ab- about people making basically plastic music, uh, fake music. Yeah. Uh, I tried to hold the world in my mouth. I mean, th- these seem to be. I couldn't tell you what that's about. I was trying to figure that one out myself. My son and I I'm tried sure to figure it that made one sense. out. It, it probably made sense at the time. I tried to hold the world in my mouth. I tried to swallow the mouth. Spread my tongue like a wing. And I was spread beside you on a bed of down. I tried to make your option be but body sing. I tried to hold the world in my mouth. I tried to hold the world in my mouth. But it, it, it does speak to, uh, again, this is just my interpretation, like a song like that one speaks to control, feeling out of control. Um, yeah. You know what? I was, I was, li- I was really liberated recently. Um, and I'm sure you've listened to this, but, uh, the new Dylan speech that has surfaced. Yeah, my God, his, I was uh, listening to it yesterday, yeah. Right? So what does it all mean? Myself and a lot of other songwriters have been influenced by these very same themes. And they can mean a lot of different things. If a song moves you, that's all that's important. I don't have to know what a song means. I've written all kinds of things into my songs, and I'm not going to worry about it, what it all means. When Melville put all his Old Testament biblical references, scientific theories, Protestant doctrines, and all that knowledge of the sea and sailing ships and whales into one story, I don't think he would have worried about it either. What it all means. John Donne as well, the poet priest who lived in the time of Shakespeare, that wrote these words, the cestos and abidos of her breasts, not of two lovers, but two loves, the nests. I don't know what it means either, but it sounds good, and you want your songs to sound good. When Odysseus in the Odyssey visits the famed warrior Achilles in the underworld, Achilles, who traded a long life full of peace and contentment for a short one full of honor and glory, tells Odysseus, there was all a mistake. I just died, that's all. There was no honor no immortality, and that if he could, he would choose to go back and be a lowly slave to a tenant farmer on earth rather than be what he is, a king in the land of the dead. That whatever his struggles of life were, they were preferable to being here in this dead place. And that's what songs are too. Our songs are alive in the land of the living, but songs are unlike literature. They're meant to be sung, not read. The words in Shakespeare's plays were meant to be acted on the stage, just as lyrics and songs are meant to be sung, not read on a page. And I hope some of you get the chance to listen to these lyrics the way they were intended to be heard, in concert or on record, or however people are listening to songs these days. I'll return once again to Homer, who says, Sing in me, O muse, and through me tell the story. You know, I've always felt a certain way about, well, music is for everyone. Obviously, we know this. And um, it no longer belongs to the author as soon as it's conceived. And it can be interpreted in many different ways. It's, you know, arguably the ultimate language. And, you know, there's this desire to say something specific that does not need to be necessarily. And I've always thought that, and I've always kind of like done that, but, um, you know, to hear, to hear someone who, who ultimately changed music for the better in a, in in a, in an era, uh, say something like the words don't have to mean something. They just have to sound good. Yeah. You know, yeah, that, that is how I've always approached it. 
you know, it's going to mean different things to different people. And, and most oftentimes it meant something to me, but that's why I, I find being questioned about particular songs difficult because I have no, like, I feel like I shouldn't have to represent modern pressure. I shouldn't have to, uh, have this, like, I don't, I don't have a manifesto that is modern pressure. I don't have this like long, you know, um, explanation of what I was trying to say or, or, or what as a whole it represents. I hope that it feels like a like cohesive album Mm -hmm. and I hope that it says something to anyone, but I don't know what that is and I don't necessarily know what I'm saying. Well, it's fascinating to hear you talk about it this way because I was ha- I've had two conversations with people who are fans of yours recently and who've heard the record, and we both we we kind of landed on this notion that it was your best record, that it was your strongest record. I I agree. That's well, you that's, have to you have that's to agree. available you're, you're to the public. You're promoting the record. Oh, that's available to the public. You've, you're sitting on something, at least I'm one always, thing. You, you know, I'm always sitting on something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's a fantastic, overwhelming record, and it it's. Uh, it's given me a, I don't know if I've put this across properly in the course of our conversation, but I, it's given me a lot to think about. And, uh, and that's all I can really hope for from it. And that's all that I could hope for. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's made me ponder you and. I mean, these are genuine thoughts. Like these are, yeah. you know, I, I'm not writing nonsense. I just think that it becomes more ethereal once it's finished. Mm-hmm. Once it's out of my hands then I don't know you know what I mean because I don't I I think it's dangerous for me to listen to and try to you know pinpoint things from I mean I'm pr- performing them all the time but that's it's really more of an environment type thing than yeah. than a, than a, a literal projection of of verse it's it's uh it's the whole thing all together. And I really, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun performing music. That's what I'm thinking about. You know, uh, you're not processing You're performing. No, because I already wrote the words. So now I'm just singing them. Yeah. It's yeah. a different thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, you, so, you, so, so I, uh, uh, not to retract what I said before, but, but, uh, there is theme and there is meaning to what is written, but, it is ever changing and not very specific. That's fair. I mean, I, yeah. I'm not. What was your conversation with your friend? What was the debate? There wasn't a debate. It was an agreement. It was okay. actually a full on like this record. Two friends, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, two different people. Uh, it was just a sort of. Uh, we came to an understanding that this felt like your strongest record, and then I'm seeing people on social media say this is the best record I've heard all year, you know, like other people. So I'm, and then I'm chiming in to be like, it's, it's ridiculously great. So I'm hoping that people dig into it and, and listen to it and, and maybe get whatever I'm still getting out of it. Cause I think it's, I'm not just ending this to flatter you. I, I just, it's, there's a lot going on. No, here. I, I, I agree. I feel, I feel that it's, it's my best to date. Yeah. And I do appreciate. But I feel that way about anything that's the newest thing I've done. Of course. You know, of course. But I think that I think that musically it's probably an amalgamation of anything of everything I've ever done. Yes, it truly is. And I again I've kind of clumsily invoked some people that come to mind when I hear it, but I think the people I've invoked are all pretty amazing and I'm hearing and I know that you're fans of many of them or I'm finding out that you're fans of many of them and I hear all of it coming through. Mhm. And uh and generally I think they're all uncompromising people. Um who want to put something interesting across something provocative across and it's a provocative album. So I'm just saying good work, good work. All all of this to say (laughs) good work, Dan, you've done another great thing. What's coming up next for you? Uh, heavy touring. Yeah. Is that good? Do you like that? I do. Yeah. I I mean, uh, I've always, okay. So my, my approach to assembling a band is probably different than, than a lot of people's, which is, uh, I don't, it's, it's really not so much about, um, ability. It's more about personality. Right. You know? Um, 
and whatever music's not hard you'll figure it out like that kind of thing Mm -hmm. uh my songs aren't you know complicated once you know them i don't envy the drummer well, it's my brother, and he's an in, he's the greatest drummer in the world. No, so it's true, it's, but yeah. I do think the I do think the. But that's the other weird thing. Like, why do you do everything yourself? You got a drummer. Does your brother? Uh, have... Because I don't know the songs before I record. Oh, them. okay, okay, right. Does that's he ever? The only reason does... my brother's way better at drums than me. Well, does he ever but... hear it and be like, "That's not how the drums work"? Yeah, <laughs> I think he. I think he has a respect for my drumming, uh, as well. Mm-hmm. But I know technically he's he's. He's def- he's he's the uh, him and Kay are are the best instrumentalists in the band. Really? Wow. I, yeah, I, they're, you're, they're you're the selling most yourself short, I think. Technically proficient. Well, I'm not that good. Uh, I'm like I'm like a hack of all trades. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, I don't I don't think that's true, but I, I, that's I, how I see it. Like I can get the job done. That's basically how I feel about what like my my musical ability. Right. Um, and I like. I shy of bass guitar. I feel like I'm a good bass player. Oh, really? Yeah. You feel like you're the strongest on the bass? Uh, well, Roddy's a good bass player, but I think I might be better than him. <laughs> 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 so you were sorry. Did you want to finish that thought? Like you don't that you were saying you don't put a band together like most people. Oh yeah, it's it's like farm team mentality, you know? Mm. Um, because personality is is and and uh, uh, the aura and and spirit of a person i think is more important than their proficiency on an instrument sure um and uh for instance um so Kay has moved to oregon which in essence is her sort of um root instrument you know she is uh she grew oh, up. Oh, you said sorry, piano. Oregon. It sounded like you said Kay has moved to Oregon. I know everyone it's, thinks I say that. I'm saying it did, that. It no, did Kay totally. Has moved I thought you were like, oh, Kay. Uh, if yeah, you hadn't finished that, Oregon. I was like, she relocated to the state of yeah, Oregon to to find herself. Right. She moved to Oregon to find herself. Right. No, she she has moved to playing the organ. Okay. And uh, and trumpet, and oh. um, also one of her root instruments, and she's a great guitar player. But the th- the magic thing about Kay is that she, because of ha- how she ha- had been sort of removed from any of the whatever typical kind of rock and roll things that you, that uh, some people have access to in their younger ages is, is, uh, is a really magical thing because she does not approach any instrument in any sort of traditional rock and roll type of way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can hear her play the organ and, of of course, the organ has a very specific sound and it does a specific thing. But she also plays it that has no nod to anything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like this, like, I've never heard an organ played like that before, you know. And that, that kind of thing comes from that type of innocence. And the only other way to get, I mean, Kay's a special case, right? Where she can do all these things and references nothing while doing them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, there's no like run that's like, okay, I'm going to do like a Garth Hudson type thing yeah, yeah, right here or whatever. It's like, I'm just going to play melodically on this organ. And that's like the end of the thought. So it's this special thing that is very... Uh, original in its in its innocence, and um, the only other way to achieve that is to get people together who aren't necessarily very good at playing music, but are wonderful people. Right. No, that makes sense. That's interesting, and it sounds like you lucked out because the. Well, my brother's really good at drums. Yeah, but he's yeah, also yeah. He, he's gone through so many phases of like. I remember like in our old, my old band with him, there was a period of time where he stopped playing well on purpose because he was going through this phase of learning rudiments and focusing on, on jazz things. Mm -hmm. And it was very frustrating because (laughs) (laughs) we were in the middle of a tour and he just decides that he has no idea how to play drums properly 
and had to start from scratch and it was a disaster. Oh man. Um, but ultimately this fed this beast, you know, he's, he's essentially, uh, he's, he's unhinged now yeah, yeah, entirely an unhinged. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I don't know what, if anything that he's channeling now, but he is, he has assembled himself quite a drum kit. Yeah, I noticed that. Know, I saw a photo. He's, he's got like two, two a, floor toms, two rack toms. Yeah, you can't miss kind of drum kit. Yeah, and uh, I think he's 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 liberated himself with with the excess of uh, drum physical drums. <laughs> it's sometimes <laughs> easier. Just, it's sometimes easier to play a five or six piece kit than it is a three piece kit. It's yeah. weird, like, because you don't have to, you just hit something, it's Just there. throw your arms and it's probably going to sound good. It's going to hit something, yeah, yeah. that's weird. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of your brother, Ian, I noticed something weird. Maybe you can speak to this. There seemed yeah. to be a lot more activity on the Attack in Black Facebook page recently. Really? Yeah, just like new photos are being added on a weekly basis there for a while. And everyone was like, what the hell? Like, are you guys getting back together? What is happening? Like, the comments are all basically that. Because there just seemed to be a regular... It was it was happening with greater... I haven't checked in a while. They would just show up in my feed. I'm like, why, is, why did they update their, you know, banner image? And why are they updating new photos regularly all of a sudden? Do you have any insight there? You are a I member can't, of the band Attack and... I can't speak to that. No? I'm not sure, no. Would you want to reconvene Attack and Light at any point? Um, if everyone knocked on the door at the same time, I would, I would think about it as it's long a, as it was an entirely new endeavor and not, uh, like a greatest hits tour or something. I would, I would, uh, yeah, I mean, I love all of those people yeah, and I would play music with them again, but, uh, uh, you're everyone not, is, everyone is in such a different place now that, I I can't see it. I can see it happening, but I can't see it happening in a way where anyone would be satisfied other than the band. So you're not privy to these decisions to like kind of keep the, the Facebook page active. Is that Ian? It's probably Ian. Yeah. I, and I think it's because he's been working on archival type things. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's most likely that. Okay. Okay. I just, we, I, I just wanted to, I just occurred to me as you were talking about it, I, I, that, uh, I mean, there is a record that never came out, and I wouldn't be upset if it was released. But I don't know in what capacity and those, if anyone. Those songs will. were amazing. Like the last yeah, time I, I, I saw I you, yeah, I really liked. I really liked that album. Well, you should put um, it out. Damn it! I agree. <laughs> well, it'll, I'm sure it'll come out eventually. Okay. Anyway, I, I didn't mean to dredge up Attack and Black necessarily, but oh, like fine. I say, it seemed like something was going on there. Yeah, that's all. Maybe yeah. maybe it is. I'm not sure. Okay, well you should know. You should maybe have a <laughs> yeah. meeting with your brother. Uh, is there a song from Modern Pressure that we can go out on right now? Oh, but first before that, uh, where yeah. can people get more info about you on the computer? Is it DanielRomano.com or something? Don, DanielRomanoMusic.com. DanielRomanoMusic.com for the latest updates and is my World to, Wide Web address. Yes, and uh, and the record's out on New West in the states, and you've changed New here? West and you and you've changed, yeah. Okay, okay. So you've changed records, New West records mm-hmm. for Modern Pressure information. Uh, yeah, is there a song we can go out on here? Uh, what do you think? Well, I think there is. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would like to go out on a song, but I want you to pick it. I, you want me to choose it? Um, my son is very into Impossible Green. Yeah, that's a good one. That Yeah, that one's good. I don't know why he fixates on that one. I'm sorry. No offense. I, it's a great song. I just, he just, I, I'm just looking at the track list in front of me and I'm like, oh yeah, he loves Impossible Green. Is there anything you want to say about that song? If we go out on that one? Um, no. Not one single thing. I like the, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's, that's good enough for me. Let's just play. This is Impossible Green from Modern Pressure by Daniel Romano. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for being back on the show and I wish you the best of luck with everything. My pleasure, thank you. (laughs) 
in reckless moments something went from being born to being spent and words that came had soon been sent to watch beyond the grasses a yellow blush of gaping sky had opened all the callous eyes to study it and realize the glare behind the lashes From the excellent new record, Modern Pressure, which is just nominated now for the uh, 2017 Polaris Music Prize. It's on the long list there. That was uh, Daniel Romano with a song called Impossible Green, as sort of chosen by my son, who loves that song. My daughter, by the way, loves I Tried to Hold the World in My Mouth. She and I sing that on our way to and from daycare frequently. It's a great song, great record, great for kids and adults of all ages. Modern Pressure by Daniel Romano. Thank you, Dan, for being back on the show and for being thoughtful and outspoken, as always. I appreciate our conversations whenever we get to have them. This is the 324th episode of the Creative Control Podcast, which is available on iTunes, Audio Boom, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Overcast, and many other podcast platforms. For more information about the show and to download or access every single episode up to this point, visit my website, vishkana.com. Also, you can visit patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation to the program. And for your trouble and for your generosity, I do have some t-shirts for sale. So if you'd like one, just uh, drop me a line and I'll get you one, okay? That's how it'll work. The show is also on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. We're on Twitter at Vish Creative. You can also follow me at Vish Khanna. And a version of this program airs every Wednesday at noon Eastern Standard Time. 
around the world at cfru.ca or if you're in the area in Guelph, Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge, uh, we've discovered as far as Arthur, Ontario even maybe, go to CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph. 93.3 FM on your radio dial to listen to this fine, fine station. This episode would not be possible without our sponsors, the finest pizzeria in Guelph, Pizza Trocadero, whom you can call for pickup or delivery at 519-829-2444 or check them out at trocaderoguelph.ca. The Bookshelf, an independently owned bookstore, bar, music venue, movie theater, and much more located at 41 Quebec Street in Guelph. Learn more about them at bookshelf.ca. And for some excellent, excellent coffee, try Planet Bean Freshly Roasted Fair Trade Certified Organic Coffee. There are cafes in Guelph, but they also distribute their coffee beans throughout Ontario, and I think even beyond that. Uh, check out planetbeancoffee.com for more information. Well, that's it for this show and this episode. Thanks for listening. Uh, Check out uh, all the other shows. As I mentioned, you can find them uh, on my website or on all the uh, podcast platforms. It is very helpful if you can rate, review, and download and subscribe uh, to the show in some way. Wherever you're listening to it, if there's a thing to click on the ratings, just do that. It seems to help, and uh, I would appreciate it. Also, I just started a YouTube page for the Long Night with Vish Khanna TV show. So uh, I posted two episodes of that uh, actually filmed TV show. Uh, So find it on YouTube. There's a long night with Vishkana YouTube channel. So uh, go check that out. All right. Like I say, that's it for me. I will talk to you very soon. Goodbye for now.